Guys, Tom Davis here, America's Canine Educator, working with a reactive German Shepherd. Um, so I'm going to walk you through from step one to step at the end. Um, so I just wanted to walk you through the entire process from the dog walks in and what I would do to assess the situation and how I deal with dogs who are reactive to people and other dogs, because apparently uh, Romeo is. So I'm going to walk you through the entire process as soon as they come in. Hope you like it. Cool. I'll just take the leash. Cool. All right, man. Okay, so very, uh, very vocal. Which is perfect. Trying to take off my bandana. Back my mic. All right, so you guys can see, obviously, very barky, very reactive. Doesn't care about me. This is the first time I met him. You guys watched him come right in. Um, so I'm gonna stop this. I'm gonna stop this behavior. Walk you through this process. Sit. All right. So the pro the prongs too big. It's not, it's not getting it's not getting good pressure. It's too far down on him. And just so you guys know, there's a person behind the camera and there's a dog behind the camera as well. He's, he's trained on a prong from his owners. So I'm gonna switch out to a smaller, smaller prong here. Good boy. So again, no problem with me. I've never met him. Um, our relationship so far is a little out of control. Okay, Romeo, heel. Heel. Good. Heel. So as this session goes on, I'm gonna bring out some dogs to see if we uh, can get him to his stimulated heightened state. Um, or at least try to train in that environment to help him with it. But as of right now, uh, a lot better control just from the change of equipment. So I'm gonna work him back and forth. Uh, and, and you guys can tell like he's very kind of nervous. He's not really that anxious for a, a shepherd that reacts. So that's good. Um, he's a little, you know, where am I? But he's not like whining and pacing back and forth. He's kind of just uh, barking at the person behind the camera as well as trying to figure out where his, his dad went. So uh, I'm going to work him on the leash just to get him tuned up with me to make him a little bit more comfortable with me and then uh, we're going to continue to get other distractions out. So I need to reprogram him to be a little bit more structured and take more guidance and as you can see Little things like this, what he's trying to do right now, I asked him to sit, he's clocking out at 30 seconds or 20 seconds and trying to get up and walk away. Nope, sit, just like that, good. So a little sloppy sit, I'm not, I don't care about the, the obedience perfection right now, I'm more worried about him just listening to me, taking direction from me, he has to realize that I'm the one, nope, sit. Because the reason why he's reacting in the first place is you guys saw when he come in, heel, when he came in, he's, out of control. He comes in just yelling at everybody, thinking he can do what he wants. Um, yes, it's the owner's fault, but a lot of people don't realize that all they have to do is just take the front, the driver's seat, in order to stop this behavior and make him a more confident dog and less reactive. So now that you guys are over there, I'm gonna get Lakota out, or Taylor's gonna get Lakota out, and uh, we're gonna see what we, what we do here. Romeo, heel, sit, sit, correction, heel, so lots of reactivity here guys, leave it, leave it, shh, no, no. off, no, shh, hey, shh. just touching in the calm him down, Coda stay, hey, shh, no, leave it, sit, Good. Good. Romeo, heel. Quick pop, guys. You see that? You might want to get right there. 
<laughs> Leave it. Heel. So quick pock to the side, guys. So as you guys can see, Romeo's an absolutely gorgeous dog. And for over a year, he's been ruling the roost and being reactive and causing stress and frustration to himself, the owner, and the environment. And as you can tell, he's smelling her. Uh, there's, there's not a lot of bite behind this bark. And as you guys are noticing, when I'm correcting him, I'm just coming right over the side and correcting him sideways when he reacts. And now, after a minute and a half of working with him around Lakota, he's now able to the point where he's not reactive, he's healing nicely. Good heal. Romeo, heal. Good man. Sit. Good, Romeo. Good job. Good job, Lakota. Very good. Romeo, heal. Good man. Romeo, sit. Very responsive. So I dem demanded that attention from him immediately in our relationship. So that way when I did apply another dog that he may be uncomfortable or insecure about, I was able to say, hey buddy, remember I'm in charge? And he goes, oh yeah. Sit. Good. Good. And he's going to lay down. I'm okay with that for right now. So it's a huge W. These guys traveled all the way from Indiana to, to train with us um, for him to get better with other dogs and other people. I'm somebody he doesn't know. That dog is somebody. Hawk is somebody. Taylor is somebody. Making great success. Little things like this of just correcting him and telling him, you know, whether it's wrong or right, will go a long way. So now we're gonna take it a step further and I'm just gonna get out of place and I'm gonna move Lakota around. Here's the thing I wanna, I can't stress enough. We are not fixed, we are not out of the woods. However, when you get a dog that is strictly reactive off of insecurity and fear from the handler and its environment that he's around because he doesn't know what else to do, we are 90, honestly 90% where we wanna be, right? The next 5% is gonna sit is gonna come from practice and obedience and continuing to have fun with him and teach him all this new stuff. And then the other big percentage is gonna come from the owners and making sure that they can do this under these circumstances. He is not reactive anymore to this dog because I was able to control him in an environment that he was unfamiliar with. So we're gonna take it a step further and start proofing this out to say, again, this is a dog he's never met. He's super reactive to dogs. He's super reactive to people he doesn't know. And um, we're, we're a lot better than when, we, when he came in. Good. Heel. Good man. Good. Sit. Good job. Good job, buddy. Lots of positive reinforcement. Yes, good, good job, Romeo. Good. The so one thing uh, I get questions on a lot is like, should you completely disengage him off of her? I, I don't think that that's realistic in this environment or fair for me to say, you just went from complete 100% for the last year of reacting to other dogs to going to watching a strange dog uh, go past you with no problems. I'm okay if he's looking, like right now he's watching Hawk. What I'm looking for as a handler is I'm looking for building. I'm looking him for to, to start to simmer before he boils. And that's the type of stuff I'm gonna, again, use my verbal, like I talked about in the beginning, to just disengage him from that type of behavior. And if I can just tell him, like right now, I'll try it. Romeo, leave it. Good man, disengagement, head goes down, and he did exactly what I wanted him to do, except get out of his sit, sit, good boy. But again, like, you know, this type, that's what I was saying in the beginning, is I'm not gonna be so worried about his obedience, like whether he goes into a down. I just want him to be stuck to me and pay attention to me. So if he downs when I ask him to sit, but he's calm around the other dog, I'm okay with that. Go touch, shh, 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 shh. Romeo, sit. Quick correction, heel, sit, good. So again, you guys saw, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really, really like feathering him in because this is so freaking big for him. So big, so big. His owners would be, are going to be so proud when they see this come out on YouTube. Um, and you know, this dog's moving back and forth, Lakota, and he gets up and he looks and I'm not gonna like overreact when that happens. I'm gonna try to get his attention and remind him of what he needs to be doing without giving him that really strong correction. But then if I say sit and he's completely glazed over, then I'll remind him, hey buddy, remember me? And then he goes back into a sit, boy. So I'm gonna grab some food really quick. 
good. And uh, I'm gonna see if I can use some positive reinforcement just to get him engaged with me, because that'll be another really great tool to use uh, to get him uh, more associated with another dog in a positive way. Opportunity, so, 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 so many people ask me like, what goes on in my mind when I'm training? This is it, I'm gonna tell you. He's looking at her, he's smelling her. It's so big for him to be this close to another dog as she's moving around, and wagging her tail and has a ball and she's not reacting. I'm not gonna like overreact on him. So if he's smelling and he's like, hey, maybe you're not so bad. I'm gonna take that as a learning experience for him as he's doing right now. Um, but I'm also gonna then go back, sit, good boy. So again, when, he, when I asked him to sit, 15 seconds ago, he's like, hold on, dude, I'm interested. And I let that slide during that time on, under my discretion because I knew that the W and the win that he was getting from interacting with her through scent was gonna be more valuable than me actually worrying about my obedience at that time. So you'll notice that I'm very discretionary on some of the stuff that I do and the obedience that I'm applying is gonna be dependent on what's going on in his brain because ultimately, the obedience is something I can always do. The behavior modification stuff and trying to change his behavior plays an important role in the first hour that you're working with a dog to tell him exactly how things are gonna go. Good, so I think, I guess it's important for dogs to, if they're gonna go out of their comfort zone a little bit and, and break the obedience during these times, that's okay, but if he's gonna be super overreactive and break his obedience, I'm gonna punish him for that pretty much immediately. But in times of gaining security and gaining confidence, I tend to let that slide. So that's just my point of view on that. You guys can take that with a grain of salt or whatever, but. Go to touch. Yes, good job, Romeo. So this would be called desensitizing, guys. She wants the food more than she wants the ball. Good, so he's getting a little stimulated here. Romeo, good, a little verbal inflection there. Hey, remember me. So again, I'm, I'm walking you through exactly what went through my head. He looked at Hawk over here in the corner, the Malinois that we have, and he got a little, for whatever reason, it, I don't know, he got a little, okay, maybe I'm not so sure about that dog. And I just said, hey buddy, voice inflection came down with punishment style. Here, Romeo, and he was like, okay, let me sit back down. And again, like I'm, I'm letting him take advantage and teach himself. And that builds a relationship between him and I to let him know that as long as he's listening to what I have to say, um, it's, the process isn't as bad. So I'm not being that militant during the times of learning curves. So I want you guys to watch what I'm doing with the leash. I'm holding it out, but watch the pressure. So what you don't ever want to do with an insecure dog when you're meeting is put pressure on the leash because it creates tension and it becomes a gun jaw. The first person that moves, he's going to react. Kind of like what he did. So when you're watching me here, this is for safety. I'm very comfortable with doing this because I know her and I feel comfortable with him. So when I'm doing this, I'm, I am using my peripherals to watch him and know that at any given moment, I can move her with my body and correct him away and deescalate the situation immediately. So that's what I'm doing is I'm, I'm always, always, always conscious of my pressure and what I'm doing with the leash and the equipment that I'm using. Left, yes, good girl. Watching him, he's not getting up. Good sit, quarter stay. Yes, he's gonna smell her through my hand here and I still have the same treat I was using for her. I'm gonna go back to her, okay? Good, good. Good job, Romeo. Touch, he doesn't really know necessarily what he's getting rewarded for right now, but I'm rewarding his calm behavior and his calm state of mind. I'm letting him know, the more you act like this, the more you get paid by opera conditioning. Teaching him what I want through correction and reward-based system, it's a beautiful thing. Left. Good job, Romeo. I'm gonna send her away in front of him. Yes, good. Good job, good stay, Corda. Good, Romeo. Well done, big man. So again, like he gets up right there, I'm gonna let that slide. <laughs> um, so I'm just trying to walk you through as much thought process as I possibly can to give you guys the insider so you know exactly what's going on in here and you know what's going on with my hands. Good, shake it off, dude. Again, this is what I love the absolute most, just working with dog behavior. Um, you know, this isn't a necessarily a big obedience thing. This is a dog with behavior situations that needed to be modified. He's a year old shepherd. He's been reactive um, for a pretty long time now. Uh, and with a big dog, 
barking the way he did when he came in, imagine going places and dealing with that. It's very, very stressful for, again, not only for you as a handler, but for the dog. He doesn't want to do these things. And so with a little bit of control and a little bit of redirection, I'm able to then safely work on the obedience to get, to get him engaged with me, to say, hey buddy, I know your whole life you think that you're in charge, but you're not. Take a seat, relax a little bit. He goes, thank God. She comes out, he goes, wait a minute, what's all this going on? And then I'm able to transition into a nice calm state of mind. Let's see if he can get down. Good man, good. And now he's in a nice, nice, nice stay state of mind. I'm really liking how he's turning nice. out. So this is so, this is what gives me goosebumps and like what's, what gets me out of bed in the morning. I absolutely adore and this is brilliant. So what I'm doing is, is what I, what I love to do is behavior modification. So this is the very first session in a dog mod, uh, behavior modification uh, client that we have for our two week board and train program. So when it comes down to behavior, it really is, unless it's ingrained, so when we talk about a dog that's been neglected, abandoned, or abused, or any of that stuff that they were born with, maybe hereditary, where you know it's genetic and they have really bad genetics and they're anxious, nervous, not trusting, that takes a little bit more time for the core of the dog to gain trust in other dogs and other handlers. That takes a lot of exercise and things like that. But when you get a dog like this, this is what everyone usually deals with when they think their dog is aggressive or they think their dog is mean, is what you're seeing right here. Comes in like a freaking bat out of, bat out of hell, completely just explosive on everything and everybody. And all I did is I said, tap, tap, tap. Hey, why don't you take it down a little bit? He looked at me and the rest is history. And now I'm able to then copy and paste this in multiple different scenarios. So our jobs as trainers here at the Academy is going to then be to apply this situation with new people, new dogs, new environments, continuing to desensitize him so he's good universally. So at the end of the day, the macro and the bigger picture is, is making him a more confident dog because that's what's creating him to be reactive. People think a dog is reacting and they're automatically aggressive. It's so not the case. This is a reactive dog, not an aggressive dog. Aggression, the big difference about that is between reactive and aggression is their intent, their intentions behind it. How serious do they look? How serious, what are they actually gonna do if you do this? And with the reactive dogs, nine times out of 10, it's gonna look like something like this. Regardless of how he looks when he comes in, an aggressive dog and a dog that is serious and has you know, two or three knockouts, if you will, under his belt, he's gonna continue to try to go after that dog at any given time. So we've created really nice energy here with both of these dogs and I'm really happy with it. We're gonna continue to work with him. Um, so we're gonna wrap it up here. Don't forget guys, you can, you can click the links in the profile in the description below to get yourself some No Bad Dogs merch. Work with me directly online and everything else that you guys need as far as equipment goes, the equipment that I've used here will be linked in the description below. Do me a favor and leave a comment and let me know what you thought of this video as well as like. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope this helps you identify the difference between holy crap, this dog looks so aggressive to wait a minute, he's really not aggressive. He's really not gonna continue to go after her if he gives the opportunity on. Um, this has been less than an hour. I'm grateful for you guys watching. I appreciate it. Um, I will talk to you guys next time. Peace.